No rest for Blackburn Rovers as they hope to take their performance against Derby all the way to Nottingham where they take on Forest this weekend and we'll talk about it next. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share and most importantly hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. This time looking forward to Blackburn Rovers match up against London Forest this weekend. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button. Keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We've got it all here under one roof. Now, before we jump into all that, just want a big, uh, a big up. Something that's going to be taking place on my Twitch channel. That's right. Uh, I'm going to be doing a sort of live on-air reaction to the game as it takes place uh, against Bolton Wanderers. That's on Easter Monday, Good Monday, uh, depending on how you call it. Um, yeah, I'm going to be, be around about 30 minutes prior to kickoff, all the way through the match. Maybe a little bit after it. I just can catch my reaction because they can be quite animated but uh, it's not just about me and the, my reaction well i'll have uh, i'm gonna have a, hopefully have a vidi printer up there hopefully have uh, keep you up to, up to date with any other goals and stuff that takes place in and around the championship maybe beyond uh and it's and it's actually a good chance for you guys to chat with me live um one-on-one -on -one, or maybe multiple people chatting with me but yeah we'll be doing that bad boy uh link to that to my twitch channel down in the old channel below uh, it's something i'm hoping to do more of next season um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do before then and now. I've got a lot of setting up. Uh, I don't. I've, I've got a Twitch channel, but I've not really used it. So it's just something that um, I, I want to get into. Anyhow, let's kick it on further and take a look at the match in a bit more detail. It does take place uh, this Saturday, which is the 13th of April at the City Ground, and Nottingham Forest are managed by Martin O'Neill. Now that's right, Aka Karanka is gone. Uh, last season uh, they finished in 17th. Uh, they're doing much better than that, but their form is a little bit iffy. Uh, the key man for me uh, this Saturday will be Joe Lolly. That's right, creative buzz in and around uh, uh, midfield. Um, scores a lot of goals, creates lots of assists as well, causes all kinds of problems. But, interestingly enough, the last time that these two sides met at the City Ground was a 1-0 win for Rovers. And that was on Valentine's Day 2017. The season we went down, boys and girls. Um, so hopefully uh, we can do a repeat of the scoreline, just not obviously a repeat of the end product where we went down. Over the years, the two sides have played each other 118 times in all competitions. Rovers winning 52 of them. Uh, uh, we've drawn 32. And Forrest are picking up 34 victories in all competitions. Now, how about the starting lineups? Well, I'm going to go with this for your steal. Uh, between the sticks, ahead of Pantelimon, uh, Robert Robinson, Bernardo Dudu at uh, centre back, uh, Wagu and Byron at uh, right back. I need to make this a little bigger. My eyes are going, folks. Getting a bit old in my, in my ways. Uh, where are we? Uh, then we've got Colback and Yates in midfield. Lolly, Murphy and Cash uh, in a, a three-man attacking midfield with Graben up top. Uh, Pyre might come in instead of Murphy, but uh, I'm going to go with that. Quick look at the stats for you. Graben tops the goal-scoring charts with 17 goals. Lolly's there with nine. Cash is in there with eight. And Murphy has six. As for the discipline, Colback has 15 yellows. Uh, Robinson has 12. Ben Luan has seven. And Watson, Ben Watson, still playing. Six yellows to his name. As for the reds, though, quite a few cards with red cards. Four, at least four. Ben Luan, Robinson. And Darikawa and Figueroa all have a red card. I, I butchered all their names uh, for you. Anyway, quick look at the last five fixtures or results for Forest. Obviously, they come into this fresh off a bit of a bit of a spank. Actually, two defeats on the spin, but they were both away from home. So they lost to Sheffield Wednesday three 0 That was on Tuesday, the 9th of April. Before that, on the sixth of April, they lost to Rotherham, who were digging deep at the bottom there. Two one victory for Rotherham. Uh, before that, though, back at the City Ground, they did beat Swansea two one winners. Uh, so pretty decent result there. Uh, and all the way back on the 16th of March, they took uh, only a point away from Ipswich at Portman Road. And all the way back, 30th of March, they did lose to Aston Villa at City Ground as well. So in different form, a quick look at their last and the remaining five results of their championship season. Obviously Rovers this weekend, but then uh, Good Friday, they take on Sheffield United, 12.30 kickoff. Uh, for them, that must be on the old Sky cameras. Uh, after that, on Good Monday, they take on Middlesbrough. Um, if you want to watch me, uh, I'll be doing my own thing on Monday, the 22nd of April, and it'll be the B Blackburn Rovers Bolton game. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Queen's Park Rangers uh, against Nottingham Forest on the 27th of April, and then wrapping up the season up against Bolton Wanderers at the City Ground. Could be a massive game for Bolton. Uh, they might already be relegated by then. Uh, anyway, quick look at the Rovers lineup now. This is, I think, 
Yep, it is the starting lineup that uh, that uh, uh, defeated Derby. Why change? Why change something that was absolutely majestical um, again? Uh, so the only if you, obviously playing in front of the Ewood faithful is different to playing uh, away from home. So he might not be as brazen as this. So we might see a little bit more. I don't know, but but uh, I think he should just go for it. The only change maybe would be Bennett and Iambe, perhaps. Um, um, Conway, Armstrong, maybe. Something like that. Or maybe even Conway Bennett. Something like that. Because I guess you need a leader on there. I don't think Mulgrew's going to be there. Quick look at the stats now. Dak has one more to his name. 16 goals uh, to it. Graham has 14. Mulgrew has 10. Armstrong has 8. As for the discipline, uh, Bennett has 9 yellows. Smallwood 8. Lennon 8. And Evans has 7. As for the Reds, Williams does have 2 of them. And Smallwood, Big Dick Smallwood, has 1. As for the last 5 fixtures, for us. it's looking a little bit prettier, but still a little bit ragged. Uh, obviously, last time out, 2-0 victory against Derby. Tremendous performance. Before that, we did lose to Stoke, though. At Ewood Park, 1-0 loss. Uh, 30th of March, we did lose to Villa. Uh, the 16th of March, we did lose to Sheffield Wednesday. And all the backs, 12th of March, we did beat Wigan 3-0. So when we win, we win quite good. Uh, as for the last five, the remaining fixtures for Rovers, obviously Forest this weekend. QPR, good Monday, Easter Monday, or sorry, good Friday, uh, 19th of April. Then we take on Bolton. I'll be live on Twitch bitches come join me uh the 22nd of april it'll, it'll be a hoot it'll be a laugh uh and then uh before the penultimate game we take on norwich down car road late kick off there and then wrapping up the season up against swansea uh at ewood park so that's that uh quick look at the form book for your boys uh this is the last um Six home games for Forest and the last six away games for Rovers. And it's not great. Uh, when you look at this like this, you see all the big W's for Forest and you see all the big fat L's for Rovers. You're probably thinking the game's going to go one way and one way alone and that should be a victory for Forest. Uh, but their last six home uh, results have been wins at Swan against Swansea, Hull, Derby, Brentford and Wigan with only the only defeat up against Aston Villa. As for Rovers though, uh, we've had losses against Villa, Wednesday, Rotherham, Reading and Brentford and the only highlight, a draw against Birmingham and that's back in the February. A quick look at the last six fixtures between the two sides though. This is better reading for Rovers. Obviously you're going to have to go all the way back. In fact, the last six were unbeaten in six against Nottingham Forest so that's got a positive reading. Uh, earlier in the season it was a 2-2 draw. It was a nervy one. I thought Forest were very good, um, but we just dug did, dug in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I'm beaten in at least six, and this is the last six encounters between the two sides at the City Ground. Only one loss for Rovers and a six game, so it's a it's a happy happy venue for us. Uh, and when we look at it, three wins out of those six games, so not too shabby indeed. So let's take a look, quick look at the form table. Uh, currently, Rackburn Rovers sit in 16th spot, and just above them, strangely enough, is Nottingham Forest. This is an overall form, uh, so for the last six games, so we won two and lost four. As for Forest, won two, uh, lost three, and drawn one. Now, how about the home form? Now, this is uh, where we're trying to pay attention. We're Nottingham Forest. So they're actually quite well uh, uh, sitting in fourth spot in the old form table five wins and one draw at the last six so that's that's the worrying fact for rovers uh, and when you look at the flip side of this rovers are actually second from bottom the current a waveform so uh yeah take from that as much as you will now what else has gone on this weekend or well, actually in the old midweek games on wednesday uh these are the one final whistle was just gone on these bad boys uh birmingham held sheffield united to a, a one old draw brentford uh put two past seems like nailed on uh, uh, certainties for the drop ips which tuna winners for Brentford Hull City picked up a 2-1 win coming from behind uh, to win uh, at home against Wigan uh, same deal for Rotherham um, they actually lost after taking the lead against 10 men Aston Villa who scored two goals uh, I think they were quite late uh, but not as late as the goals over in uh, Norwich at Carrow Road uh, Norwich coming from uh, one one goal behind to to take the lead 2-1 two very late goals in that one uh, to take a 2-1 lead but up steps Roman Notter, seven minutes of injury time to level it 2-2 in an extraordinary game at Carroll Road. And the leaders uh, have been stopped. They've been halted by one of the strugglers. And wrapping up a bit of a snore fest over the den, nil, nil. Now, what has that done to the table? Well, it looks like this. So, um... It's not all. It's not all uh, rosy for Norwich now. That's a, a bit of a banana skin for them. Six points to their lead now. Uh, cut as Leeds are in second spot. Uh, one point ahead of Sheffield United. Uh, West Brom Villa and Bristol City make up the playoffs. As for the bottom of the table, Ipswich Bottom and Rotherham are in the drop zone. And I think the lead is only 11 points between uh, Rotherham and Rovers who sit in 16th spot. As for Nottingham Forest... They're in 11th spot, sitting there with 15, 57 points on the board. Uh, a win for Rovers this weekend could see us jump as high as, get this, 15th. Uh, as for Forrest, a win for them 
they, they, they still have a, an outside shot of the playoffs, but a win for them would definitely give them a bit of a boost. Uh, where would they were? They could go as high as eighth, depending on what goes on elsewhere. But it looks like right now, Bristol City, uh, they have a good look, all to lose. Quick look at those games that take place this weekend. QPR, strugglers take on Swansea, who have not had the best of luck. Ipswich, if they're going to do anything, I think they'll get relegated if they don't win uh, at home to Birmingham. Sheffield United take on strugglers. Millwall, Reading take on Brentford. Derby against strugglers. Bolton. Leads against a very difficult Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, Middlesbrough take on Hull in a bit of a do or die playoff push there. Uh, Stoke against Rotherham as well. Big game for Rotherham if they're going to get out of the drop. Uh, Villa take on Bristol City. Meet you on that in the old playoff hunt. Uh, West Brom against a difficult Preston and Wigan up against Norwich. But the highlight obviously is Forrest against Blackburn. Now, before we wrap this baby up, a uh, quick look at the current top goal scorers. Timo Puki still the man up top, 26 goals. I think he has actually been crowned Championship Player of the Season. Tammy Abraham in second with 23 goals alongside Billy Sharp. So, a joint second, you could say. Uh, che Adams, Malpe, Bowen, Rodriguez, Gale, McBurney, and Graben uh, complete the top 10. And just behind them, it is Bradley Dak. So get one more goal this weekend, Ducky boy, and you'll finally make it to the top 10. As for the assist makers, down the bottom there, Benarama is the main man. 14 assists to his name. Grosicki is in second with 12 for Hull. Hernandez, uh, uh, not Forrest, Joe Lolly's in there with Buenda as well. Now have a little bit of what I've got to say about the match. Now what you really want to hear is what the opposition fans have to say. So I am joined live via Skype by Jack Inger, who is a diehard Nottingham Forest supporter. So... For my small corner of the YouTube universe, if you don't mind telling a little bit about yourself on why on earth you support Nottingham Forest. Basically, born in Nottingham, grew up in Nottingham, granddad, dad, everyone in my family support Forest, so I've just gotta gotta take the reins and I've been a season ticket holder for about ten years now, so since when I was quite young and uh, fell in love with the club instantly and I don't think I'll ever stop. Yep, yep. There's the, a very historical club, traditional club, um, and they deserve to be back in the Premier League. But uh, it doesn't look like this year is going to be the year. Uh, but we'll we maybe we'll dabble that in that in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do here is kind of like a, a season overview of, uh, of how Nottingham Forest have gone on this season. Obviously, they've had a change of manager midway through the season, and it seems to be... From what I'm getting, not a positive change of manager. So, but anyway, um, okay. From your point of view, who's been your standout player for you this season? Uh, Joe Lolly. Why is that then? Why is Joe Lolly? He um, he scored a, a lot of goals from wide positions. Obviously, wingers aren't meant to score goals, but he, he's he's got a, a fair few goals this season, and he's racking up the assists. I think he's one of the joint top assisters in the league. And uh, he can turn de defence from attack to very quickly. He's just a quality player. He shouldn't be at Forest, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. He has. He. Uh, I think he kind of ran ran us ragged at uh, at Ewood. Um, I think. Yeah. I think Graben got the goals. I'm too, maybe Jolly Jolly yeah. did get a goal. I'm not too sure. I can't remember. Um, okay. So oh, that's the the positive end of the spectrum. Now, what about on the opposite end? Who's been an absolute dud? But yeah. Uh, well, he's um, probably a goalkeeper, Castel Pantillon one. He's, I don't know what he's doing sometimes. It, it, when you watch him, like he'll save the absolutely worldy shots. If shots are flying in the top corner, he'll, he'll somehow get to a shot straight at me. It's like it's like he goes invisible and the ball just goes straight through him. Honestly, he's just, I don't know what's wrong with him. Obviously, he's got loads of experience from Man City and Watford, but I, I don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, I think I did notice in your last game, or at least the last game anyway, you, you haven't been playing him in goal, so... Um, yeah, we. I went to the Sheffield Wednesday game last night, and we and we dropped him. So I don't know what but, he's going to get with on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that leaves because uh, a three 0 loss, and yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, it, it is a goalkeeping conundrum. It is. <laughs> Uh, and I, when I first looked at it and I saw you had Steele between the sticks, I thought it was Jason Steele, who was an ex-Rover, yeah. who was Butterfingers back in the day. So, <laughs> so, uh, uh, But it wasn't him, it was a different Steele. So, okay, so that was your, your bit of a turkey. Now, what about anyone coming through the ranks in the academy, maybe, uh, through Nottingham Forest? Who, who should we sh uh, keep an eye out? Maybe to be in the first team this weekend, but maybe somebody for next season. Well, th there's two players, actually. Uh, Ryan Yates uh, from Nottingham, come through the ranks. Earlier in the season, well, pre-season, Ita Karanka, our manager who was in charge, said that yeah, he was going to get a chance. And then he wanted him to, wanted to loan him out to either a League Two side. That didn't happen. So uh, as soon as Martin O'Neill came in, he chucked him straight in there in the mid uh, heart of the midfield. And he's been, been playing quite well. But I think the player with our most potential is Arvin Apaya, a uh, young, tricky winger. Quick, powerful, skill, skillful. He's, he's got everything really, and he, he actually started the game last night. His first start for Forest, so yep, I hopefully did. we'll see him soon. 
did did notice that I did uh, could because I, I do some graphics for the team sheets and I, and I use this thing called Foothead and I can't find yeah. him on there. I can't find a player, so he's probably somebody uh, yeah very young and and and, and yeah. just just uh, pop, uh, pop through. Okay, so obviously you mentioned it and I mentioned it already. Change of manager midway through the season, so that probably brought two transfer windows or two different philosophies. Yeah. Uh, who's been the best signing? Uh, it could be from Karanka, it could be from O'Neill if he made any. I don't do, I don't know if he made any, but. Uh, um. I'd yeah. probably say Jao Carvalho under Karenka. 13 million. He had a lot of uh, pressure put on his shoulders at the start of the season. He was expected to go on and take the team forward and up into the playoffs and automatic. And when he plays, he's, he's one of them plays he can be out of a game for 85 minutes and then he can switch on and he can make a game up in five minutes. He, he's one of them players, but under O'Neill, he's just not been getting the game time. He just doesn't like him. Mm. So... Interesting. Well, we'll see what what develops with that in the summer. If he sticks around, if O'Neill yeah. sticks around, you never know. You never know. Uh, I think I think I don't know if if, if a, a complete U turn by Nottingham Forest would be on the cards, and maybe Karan could come back come back in. I don't know if that's something that's plausible, but ah, I don't know. I'd, anyway, okay. So so you made your, your your promising sign or your best signing. What about who's been a complete waste of money? Who you thought? Oh my goodness! Can't believe we spent that kind of money on on this guy. And he's been absolutely garbage. Well, it's actually a loan signing that would have turned to a permanent signing. Uh, Gil Diaz at the start of the season, he came in from Monaco on loan. He had all this potential, just like Carvalho. And uh, in January, O'Neill decided to get send him back to Monaco, and now he's playing for Olympiacos, which is obviously our other partner club. And uh, I think if the deal would have gone through as a permanent deal, I think he would have cost us about twenty three million. Oof, and blimey. he's just he wasn't good at all. Oh, well, we've uh, we've we've got we had our own loan to permanent from Forest, and he hasn't scored a flipping thing yet, Ben Brereton. Uh, but hey, hey, it's a work in progress, youngster. Do you rate Brereton by chance? Uh, uh, when he was at Forest, yeah, he, he had uh, a few good games, uh, albeit under Karanka, he started to play out on like the right wing sometimes. I don't know why he did that. He's a striker, but I, I think uh, he's one of them confidence type strikers. If he gets a few goals, then he'll carry on going, but. He's just obviously still young, like you said, and he'll, he'll learn the game. I'm hoping he gets more games at the towards the end of the season, and maybe uh, we'll have a new striker on our hands next season. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so you mentioned worse. What about uh, you? Might you mention your best player? But who's who's your favourite player? Who do you like looking forward to seeing week in week out? Joe Lolly. Joe Lolly. Yeah. yeah. He, he's just he's one of them exciting players where he can put one in the top corner from 30 yards and things like that. Just like with you, like with Bradley Dack and people like that. Yep, yep. Okay, what about uh, uh, anyone in the in the middle of the park, maybe in defence, that, that's likely to cause some problems, maybe even get himself a red card or break someone's <laughs> legs? Who, who should we keep an eye out for that? Johan Beneloan, signed uh, O'Neill's first signing in January from Leicester. He's one of them defenders where if he's in trouble, it's going into the, the Notts County Stadium. He's, he's putting his foot straight through it. And uh, he's one of them players who can be very clumsy when going into a tackle as well. But he's one of them. He, he, he'd, put, he'd run for a, a brick wall for this club. Well, that's good. That's, 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 it's a good trait to have, but it could also be a dangerous one yeah. to have. OK, very so dangerous. so we talked about our best player and favourite player. But uh, who who kind of gets too many plaudits for, for his play? You know, kind of a big reputation. And then he's just like, meh, you know, not not, not, not delivering for uh, you. Ben Osborne. Ben Osborne. He's been, He's been in and around the squad for five, six years now, and he's, he's, he, 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 in my opinion, he's only done one good thing ever in his first career, and that was scoring the winner in the 90th minute away at Derby. And it, it's just, I don't rate him at all. I don't think he's not quick, he's not powerful, he can't shoot. He's just, a lot of people like to put him in the team every week and things like that, but I just, I'm not a big fan of his. Okay. Okay. What about on the opposite end of that spectrum? Now, who doesn't get a lot of plaudits? Who think? Who do you think sh- uh, deserves more praise? He might not score the goals or create the assists, but does a lot of donkey work. Jack Colback from mm-hmm. on loan from Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, it, we're struggling to get him actually on loan this season. We had him last season on loan, and under Karanka we wanted him again, but apparently we, we had to pay like stupid amounts of wages for him. But at the time, it was causing like a bit of a thing with the fan scene. He's not worth the money. He is worth the money. But in my opinion, he's worth the money. Every single penny. He, he'll run around that midfield for fun. He, his passing is stupidly good. And uh, he's one of the players who run through a brick wall for this club. Like, he'll go into any challenge. Mm-hmm. OK, so now let's go over through the archives a little bit. You've had some real quality players in recent years and, and even beyond. 
Uh, Stan Collymore's goal machine, Roy Keane, crunching tackles. But who has been your best ever player in your eyes uh, for Knott's Forest? Um, probably Nigel Clough. Nigel Clough, yeah. wow. Brian Clough's son. Yeah. yeah. He's one of our, I think he's our te- second top scorer in history. And uh, Wow. Huh. He's, he's what a player he was. I, I didn't I did see that one coming. Would, would you have him back as manager? Um, this is a thing that caused a lot of things with uh, Forest fans because obviously he's a legend as a player, but when he first started his managerial career, Forest offered him the chance and he, he turned us down to go to Derby. So oh, whether, he, whether he comes to us or not, I don't know. Goodness gracious. That's a, that's a strange one. Okay, so if you, could, if you had a magic wand now and you could yeah. wave it around the old championship and steal just one player from anywhere, it could be Leeds... Could be Ipswich. I don't know why you would go there, but maybe. But if you could take one player and put him in your eleven, who would it be? Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish. Ooh, yeah. I, I just love his style of play. He's one of the players. If you're playing against him, you hate him. If you've got him on your team, you love him. Yep. And uh, he's he's what a player he is. He, he needs to leave Villa if they don't go up, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think he's a big. I like um, like uh, Lolly, perhaps bigger club, bigger bigger person for his for his club. He's outgrowing it a little bit, definitely. I think I've got a sneaky feeling Villa got this one though. I think they might, they might, they might yeah. go it. I might go all the way. Uh, but anyway, speaking of going all the way, where do you think you'll ultimately finish in the league? Uh, I say ninth this, this ninth, year. Ninth, that's okay. Which I is, that, it, it is an improvement on recent years. Obviously, we fought relegation two years ago. I think it was staying up on the final day. So I will, I'll take ninth, but with the money we spent at the start of the season, it was it's, it's been a disappointing season in my opinion. Yeah, I think there you. I had you. A little bit higher than that originally at the start of the season. I thought playoffs uh, for Forest. Um, okay, so uh, I got down here. Who do you team you hate and why? Uh, obviously, there's there's uh, there's local rivalries. So you can include that one, and then maybe give me another one. Uh, so obviously, Derby Derby is the Derby is the one I hate. We, I we just, did you a favour uh, then yesterday. We, we uh, yeah, that. big favour. <laughs> uh, a lot of people would say Knox County, but. They, 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 obviously, they mind in their own business in League Two. They're in their own relegation. Yeah. Uh, anyone else in this division, Championship? Who, do, who don't you want? Like basically, at the top of the te- like, you know, is there anyone that you don't want to see go up? Leeds. Yeah, there we go. There don't, we go. don't like them. I forced it out of you. There we go. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. okay. All right. Now, so let's wrap this baby up. And uh, 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 final score prediction on Saturday. Obviously, you come into this in a little bit iffy form, but yeah, I think your home form's pretty decent. Um, so, what's the score going to be? Realistically, I think it's going to be a one-one, but I'd like to say a two. I'd like to say a two-one win for Forest. I'd, I'd love to say it, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's. Yeah, look. As I was going around Nottingham Forest Twitter and everything yesterday, looking forward to a guy. You such yourself. Thank you for stepping up. Um, but yeah, I saw a lot of a lot of grumpy people out there. Obviously, it doesn't help with the defeat, but just yeah. just a lot of people are on O'Neill's case right now. Um, but. Uh, but do you think anything will be made in that regard towards the end of the season? Or do you think he'll be here next season? Uh, I think he'll get to the end of the season and the owner will, I think the owner will say, like, it's, it's, that's his time done now. Especially if the results keep going like they did last night. Then he can't give him, sure, he can't let him have so much money to go and spend in the summer or whatever. Because we're not even, it's not like we're playing nice football either. We're just, we're being battered every week by playing rubbish football, so... Okay. Okay. Well, we'll have to. We'll keep our eyes glued on that one. Anyway, thank you, Jack, for joining us, and hopefully, we'll get some feedback from you after the game, win, lose, or draw. Yep. Okay. Yep. And if you want to check out more, Jack, he's got his own channel. I've got to put his description link in the old description down below. But anyway, until then, we're going to let you get out of here. Thank you. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for both Nottingham Forest and Blackburn Rovers. Here are three of them. How about this guy, Alan Wright? Yes, he is for me. Familiar around the footballing world, or especially England, as being the bold left back. But we had him with a full set of hair. Goodness gracious. Uh, how about this guy? Current uh, under 23 slash under 21. I don't know whether. Uh, Rovers Reserves manager Damien Johnson. That's right. Did rock uh, the old blue and white horse. He also played for Forest back in the day with his long mane of hair. Uh, and wrapping it up, this guy, he's on the, be- he's on the beach already. Uh, that's because that's where he plays his football. Cyprus, uh, Matt Derbyshire, that's right. Obviously, you're an ex-Rover, Rovers fan, come through the academy and all that kind of good stuff. But he also scored a few goals 
for Nottingham Forest. Now, if you want to check out a full list of all the players that have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Nottingham Forest, head over to my WordPress site. Details to that sucker in the old description below. Now, you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. You've heard what the opposition fans have to say. What does Cast the Cat think is going to happen this weekend between Forest and Rovers? Here she comes. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a good old thumbs up. And if you're new, turn the channel, smash the old subscribe button, bang up to date with all things Black and Rose related, championship related, world football related. We've got it all here under one roof. And while I still have you, just another recap, just another promotion push for my Twitch. It's not really my debut, but we've gone back on Twitch, boys and girls, for live reaction, play-by-play -play kind of thing against Bolton on Good Monday. Check me out. Link to that puppy in the old description below. I'll be teasing it from now forever until until monday until the easter monday so make sure you check it out i uh, hope hope to see you there uh, you can chat with me live one-on-one -on, -one on the old twitcher sphere uh also i still have you stick your own predictions comments down in there uh to see what you think will happen between forest and rovers we need another win just like derby if we can get another win on our cards it'll be i think mathematically in the bag for us to be home and dry and maybe we can start playing brereton chappers nuttall all these kind of players, the French players, to kind of see out the season. Anyway, I'm going to let you get out of here until I see you again. And this, guys, will be shortly after the final whistle against Forest on Saturday. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>